Hello, this is David Epstein, once again from Bioponica, uh, just giving you an update on what we're doing here with the BioGarden and our liquid organic nutrients that we're using to uh, create this uh, lush uh, garden here. But uh, what we've got, I, I harvested um, uh, what uh, was actually growing in here two weeks ago and just uh, let this go, uh, thinking it might have had gone to flower if I didn't harvest it um, two weeks ago, but it didn't, and it still hadn't gone to flower. So, but it's definitely time to harvest, and it looks pretty ridiculous. I don't know. Um, this is six square feet of growing area that I've got this basil, and we're outdoors under the elements. It's getting, a, you know, we've had some rainstorms. Uh, this basil in a greenhouse would be standing straight up in this area, probably overcrowding itself as, uh, uh, as it's, in this case, uh, stretched out to, gosh, uh, this is almost behaving as if we're looking at 6 by 5, 30, 6 by 5, 4 by 5, uh, 20 square feet. I mean, really, if you, if you if your plants were going, if they had this much room, if it would, t if they're taking up almost it on a, if it was on a linear, on a flat surface on the ground, that would be taking up about t about 15 or so, maybe 20 square feet. Anyway, the basil looks beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, um, and. I actually left this uh, with uh, uh, with Ken, my partner, uh, who came by, stopped by my house every couple of days to add the nutrients and make sure the water levels were topped off. Uh, for that, we're using rainwater, which you can see in the back, very back, with those corrugated pipes. We've got vertical standing rainwater collection, and then here we're making our nutrients, doing some storage here. Uh, this one will set up for. Uh, maybe expanding this process, but uh, nonetheless, that's what's going on. Lots and lots of basil. Very excited to show you guys, and uh, love to hear your comments. Um, I think we've got magic going on here. This has been up until today. This was in in direct sunlight, and you would think it would have formed a lot of algae, particularly since there's enough nutrients in there to cause pretty good, you know, sort of cloudiness to the water. That's, that's from the algae uh, that is in there <clears throat> and the nutrients, but not enough to, uh, to hinder the growth of these plants. And there may be some algae on the roots. There actually is kind of an interesting root formation going on here where we have, well, you can see, yeah, everything's really done well no buildup of any sort on those roots and they're like that through and through you can be sure um, and uh, yeah healthy organic uh, soilless um, deep water culture system uh, we call it bioponics and we call it bioponics because uh, there is um, it, it is entirely biological we're recreating uh, organisms colonizing organisms uh, by recreating an environment that is hospitable uh, to the, the soil um, a majority or a great number of the soil borne uh, organisms that uh, improve root growth or may maintain uh, root growth through the uh, uh, consumption of organic matter and the release of that uh, into the uh, toward to the roots as as an inorganic fertilizer. So we're doing that by feeding our plants entirely organically, and doing so by managing the um, the percentage of organics, uh, the percentage of ammonia, and the uh, uh, the concentration of of nitrogen, uh, as well as phosphorus, potassium, and all the other elements through some blends that we do. We create some blends to give us uh, 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 higher concentrations of different uh, nutrients by 
these blends of biomass elements uh, that are that contain the nutrients and as they're decomposed by the roots in these setups in the bio garden using bioponics no chemicals whatsoever nothing of the sort in fact we have fish in here we have a little goldfish in there that gets to graze on things including uh, duckweed which we keep in there um, uh, or we use to feed them um, particularly they don't it doesn't usually last very long but I add it from this one over there which is growing duckweed it has no mollies in, in that trough and uh, until I feed the uh, the, the goldfish that are down below, which I'm doing night right now. This is not get a little out of you in there. Hogging up one of my lines, my little drain line to a certain extent, blocking the automatic feeding of duckweed. But look, this is a lot of algae, a lot of algae, but not a problem. You know, I can put it right down there and let those goldfish chow into it, which they will do in a minute here. As you see. Yep, loving the algae, loving recycling, recirculating everything. Get that out of here. This bed is starting to tilt because of the weight of the tomatoes and everything that's going on over here. But again, I was not here, so I haven't been able to prune these things and, and, and or um, uh, make sure the tomatoes were coming off the vines as they, as they ripen. But nonetheless, still just going crazy. Uh, they did get their nutrients every two or three days, and in which case we'd add maybe uh, a gallon of this approximately 2,000 parts per million nitrogen liquid made from organic biomass using our NutriCycler uh, and primordial soup grow teas that we're, that we're creating um, uh, from the biomass. Anyway, so I've probably re-summarized this again uh, so that everyone understands we are talking about bioponics, which is a variation of hydroponics and aquaponics. We think it's more organic. We think it's certainly certifiable as organic, and we think it's more sustainable. And uh, uh, as we have no chemicals to discharge, we're not doing any uh, mining or sourcing of, of organic matter of, of biomass or fertilizers that are either mined or manufactured by petrochemicals. Um, and so, and we can have fish in here, but we don't depend on the fish. And yet we create more nutrients than you might uh, be able to get from other methods uh, because we're in control of the, of the uh, nutrients and we're doing that for the purpose of the plants, uh, not to, as a feed for the fish. So fish are a convenience. They do, they do really well in here. We've got some down here. I get the duckweed opening set up there. There you go. There you go. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're feeding duckweed from here through our weir on a trickle valve. And going down here to feed the fish. There we go. Everybody's liking that. So we get algae, we get some duckweed. That'll keep them for a while. Uh, they're also getting their nutrients by drinking these organic uh, liquid fertilizers. Uh, as they are suspension feeders, filter feeders, and they uh, consume the nutrients, they swallow the nutrients, they, they collect enough nutrients on the rakes of their gills uh, that they can uh, uh, feed on just the suspended solids in the... In the uh, in the water and that's how a large portion of what what fish consume naturally um, fish that are in particular herbivores and or detritivores and filter feeders includes crawfish and shrimp and other you know goldfish and tilapia 
and so on. Anyway, I know I've taken up more than my usual amount of time, but uh, thanks again for watching. Please check us out uh, at bioponica.org and leave us your comments. I'd uh, love to hear from you. Thanks.